You're listening to The Soju Sessions, episode 60 on the Soju Talk Nation podcast feed. I'm your host, Crispy, also known as Crispy Wonton, or simply just Anton. And on today's episode, Alex, the host of How You Been, returns to the show for a home and away coverage of Wusong and his newest mini album, Moth. Um, I'm just going to say it. I really, really dig Wusong. Um, artistically, I think he's doing some really interesting creative things. Um, a lot of self-expression that is very abstract, um, but also very authentic and genuine to um, what I've learned about Wusong recently. Um, and I think this album, and it's all in English, so it's very easy for me to relate with. Um, I was definitely projecting some personal experiences into um, the interpretation of the album, but Overall, I had a really great time listening to the album, analyzing, going into detail. Um, and Alex, um, longtime fan of The Rose, longtime fan of Wusung, Sammy himself. Um, yeah, we get into some pretty cool details about how we felt about this release and everything. So um, I just super enjoy this. Could not recommend this album enough. It is four songs. It's a really easy listen. It's very emotional. It's got a lot of complexity. Um, but again, it's only four songs. So you can go in and out and kind of go on with your life or spend some time with it and really let it sink into your soul, which it absolutely has. All right, well, let's get into it. Coming up, my chat with Alex on Wusong Moth on the Soju Sessions. Joining Soju Sessions and making her return to the show to talk about Wusong, um, the host of How You Been, um, soon to be West Coaster, I suppose Phoenix, Arizona is on the West Coast. Um, it's pretty close to the West Coast. Closer to California, where Wusung is from. The one and only Alex. Welcome back. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, we are doing a Home and Away series for Wusung. Um, I just recorded an episode of How Have You Been? So I will link that in the description um, where it's really just a fireside chat. It's just two friends hanging out, talking about Wusung, talking about other K-pop. Um, I totally did not make any mistake of a Wusung feature <laughs> that we will not be discussing here today. Um, but if you are interested, check out that episode. Um, it will be going up on her podcast feed. It'll be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, no, this is great. Um, you know, I never would have imagined myself talking about a male artist, a male soloist for three hours. If you, if you told me that I was going to do that last year, I would have I would have said a slander, lies and slander. And yet I am enamored by Wusong um, as a musician, as an artist, um, as an expression of art. Um, I've become a big man. Um, I started listening to him a little bit last year, near the end of the year when Lazy came out and then Genre came out with um, Dimples and I was all in. So um, I personally just connected with the style of music. It's in an R&B-esque realm, but there is a lot of pop elements. There's a lot of punk rock elements. Um, there's a lot of pop punk elements. But I think for me, ultimately, it's about the artistic creative expression that he expresses. Alex, you are a big fan. You are on a first name. You are on an English name basis with Wusong, calling him Sammy all the time. Um, what is it about Sammy's art that really resonates with you? Um, <laughs> Sammy. Uh, <laughs> Sammy, I, I just, so I started as a The Rose fan. So I came in before Wusung even had any, like, solo music out. Um, <laughs> and uh, that spoke to my emo heart because those songs are super emo, especially, like, She's in the Rain. Um, <laughs> and then I think it was just kind of natural to go into, into Wusung's songs after that. They all have just, like, a specific feel and vibe to them and it's just easy to to listen to and have a good time with uh i don't think until this album i really dug too deep into his lyrics but and i didn't mean to with this one because i don't generally do that 
but he talked about it so much on on Twitch and and elsewhere that it just it kind of happened where it was naturally of oh there's actually a lot to this album, um so it's been fun just connecting on that way instead of just screaming lyrics in my car. <laughs> yeah, with this album specifically with Moth, it's all in English. I think that's what you know surprised me the most because his previous songs you know a blend of Korean and English, but this is a completely English album um on first listen i was able to pick up a lot of the lyrics and words and phrases and how he blended things together and yeah i think that's what kind of helped me at least solidify kind of the artistic direction that he was going to with this song uh, with this album um how did you feel about the tonal shift between genre and moth i i really like genre but i this definitely fits more of the type of tone like that i like to listen to um, so this was has been much more on replay than genre was for me, um, and will continue to be on replay for a while. <laughs> yeah, there is a variety of sounds that he's playing off of in genre, um, and I think that has well, maybe not completely, but I think there there is something to be said about him releasing singles off of that album prior to the full album coming out. Whereas Moth, it feels like one cohesive message, one story that he's trying to tell. Um, mm-hmm. We actually came to this epiphany literally seconds before hitting record just now. Um, and we'll get into track specifics in a minute, but track number one is Come Down and track number four is Modern Life. Both of those songs use the, fra- uh, use the word fake in very similar ways. Um, Come Down talks about fake friends in someone's life, um, coming to that realization of moving past them. Modern life is what does that mean now to be separated through a screen and seeing fake people, um, you know, having an influence, having an impact on existence, on being. And I feel like there is a wordplay that is poetry between the first and the last song, the beginning of an end. Um, And that's what really resonated with me as far as this album. Um, I... Like like you did not dig into his prior songs the same way. Um, I think the English lyrics definitely helped, but going track by track, reading along to the album, um, really kind of showcased a lot of the artistic expression that um, you know maybe I inherently knew he had, but showed far more now than I think I've ever been aware of. Um, so let's get into the album. So we've got Wu Sung with Moth. Track number one, Come Down. Alex, what are your first thoughts about Come Down and how this song opens the album? So I I think the first thing that stood out is how much slower this is than genre. So he has been more upbeat with with the songs prior to this uh, release. Even before genre came out, I think the last solo song he had put out was the one with Peniel, Pretty Girl, which is a very upbeat song. Um... And so it's it slowed things down again, and it kind of set the tone for the album because I'd say the the whole album's pretty on the slower side, um, especially when you compare it to other um, albums and other songs he's released. So I think it was a good start to the album, though. I think it makes sense here. Yeah, I think when when, when comparing to genre, um, Dimples definitely is the pop friendly song right where it definitely works as a k-pop song but it also can work as a western friendly song um it does the retro um to me fantastically i kind of love that feel for him because of the sound of his voice this entire album um has a very um like low lit feeling to it right where Mm -hmm. um you know it's it's evening um you know the sunsets orange seems to be a very prominent color motif that he's using in the music video and also in the um the 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 art for the album with come down um the inspirations that i feel like are drawn from it are odessa definitely feel the future based kind of the indie electro from early 2010s um but there is a trap flip after the first chorus and i wanted to get your opinion on kind of the blending of those two different genres how did that hit you as far as the emotional component of what you know about wusong getting into things i don't know anything about um, <laughs> um i so i i as much as i love this entire album i'd say this is probably my least favorite off of it out of the four so um 
I, I, I don't know if it is because of that. I just didn't notice because I can't quite put my finger on what's not as good as the rest. While still being good. Like, I've, I've still been listening to the whole thing on repeat. It's not that I skipped the song, but I, I'd i much rather listen to the other songs. So it might be some of that because it's, it's not his voice. It's it's And it's not the lyrics, so... Well, let's go into the voice. So he has his very characteristic raspiness to it. Um, yes. How do you feel like that evokes a lot of the emotions of the song? Because to me, the song talks about um, kind of breaking through and, you know, kind of transforming. Um, I didn't mention this at, at the top, but the theme of the entire album to me, in addition to the moth motif, is this rebirth, kind of restart. Um, how do you feel like that plays in to kind of the lyrics and what you know about um, the way he put this song together, um, at least as far as the way he talked about it on Twitch. Um, I think that I think that makes sense with this album because it is it is kind of a rebirth. Um, going back to genre, genre was actually like a, a most of it, I want to say was like a compilation of like songs he just had sitting around for a while. Um, that because of things he couldn't release, um, and so that I think was why that one was more it felt more like a compilation album than like had any kind of flow to it whereas this one has that flow and it is a fresh start with the new label um and things coming for the rose as a whole coming up soon um as we regain members from the military um at the same time this is actually to look at it a different way this is kind of not the end but a pause for solo wuzo because um, with the rose coming back, he's like the reason we even got a physical album for this is actually because this is the last solo work from him for a long time, is what he said. So it's it's almost a rebirth and a closure at the same time. <laughs> so I think that's part of Wu Sung's creativity that I admire the most, right? Where he can kind of blend between two worlds, kind of tread the line of um you know, similarities and contradictions, I think what we know of him as far as his stage presence is that he's a very shy person. He's an introvert, right? He's introspective. He's a mama's boy, but with the artistic expression that he has visually in the music video that we'll talk about later, it's very boisterous. It's very kind of in your face, but also modern and abstract. Um, and I think it's just really cool that he's able to express that, especially in this opening song, um, kind of, the, the rebirth theme and also you know, breaking away from people that may be weighing you down. Um, I love the line. And I'll just say it again. It's the fake friends want to break and steal your lights. I feel like light is also very important in this album. Um, and we'll mm -hmm. kind of allude this to this later, but a moth being drawn to the light. What does that mean? Right. Does that mean, you know, coming to something that is shiny, that's something attractive, or is there some deeper, perhaps more complicated experience when you're going towards the light, specifically the experience of a moth, right? Where they're just so attracted to whatever is flickering, but what does that truly mean in the distance? Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it's a great way to open the album. I think there's a lot of complexity in this song and it, it's pretty short. Um, I feel like a lot of his songs are pretty short, but it does a lot of things, right? Um, the, the genre switch, the, the genre switch in this song, I think really caught me by surprise in a really good way. Um, and it leads into track number two. This is my favorite song, Side Effects, featuring Sadika. Um, what did you think about this song? Kind of being, um, again, keeping a very similar pace with the energy level. It's got a very groovy bass line. Um, but how did this song hit you? I uh, I really like the song again. This one was a lot of fun. It it has kind of at the beginning a little bit of like a kind of up and down to the melody a little bit with how he sings it, which is a uh, it's cool because um, his voice does that really well, I think. Um, and it was really cool. To, it's a it's the first feature he's had that I didn't know the artist, which is interesting. Branching out a little bit from the K-pop side because I don't think Sadika has anything to do with K-pop. <laughs> um. Yeah, this song is my favorite. Um, it's very groovy. Um, to me, I get very like feelings of a smoky, low lit jazz room. Um, but it's pretty. It's it's very modern, right? It's very like in mm -hmm. Wu Sung's kind of moodiness. 
Um, what do you think about the lyrics and kind of it's it's very seductive, right? Or he's talking yes. about he um, you know is feeling these side effects um, and almost equating love, passion, desire with being on drugs and kind of the withdrawal of not being with someone. Um, first question: What did you think about Wu Sung kind of connecting that with you know being a moth drawn to a flame? And two. Have you ever had an experience with someone you were pining over that you just couldn't get them out of your system? <laughs> um, so I guess for the first one, uh, I think it fits right in with the motif, with the moth and the light and, and all of that. Maybe in a different direction from from how he initially went with the moth uh, motif of being in the spotlight instead of this is more of heading to the spotlight, I guess. Something else is in the spotlight. Um, for the second question, yes. <laughs> well, you've answered it. <laughs> Elaborate. I don't know that I want to. Um, if it makes uh, you feel better, I can t briefly tell a story of, of my experiences. So definitely a, a time when, you know, it's been exacerbated by um, things that you would consume when you go out, um, whether that is prescription or not um, not saying that i have consumed them it's just i've been around such situations and in the moment there is a euphoria when you are in the presence of someone in that very passionate state um, whether that uh, euphoria is caused naturally or enhanced is up to your imagination but <laughs> it is very intense and once you finally have that separation whether that's the next day whether you have to get on with the rest of your life because you have work or school on a Monday. Um, there are going to be those times where you need to fill in the gaps of what the rest of life is, but there's just something burning, desire burning inside to meet that person, to call them, to text them. Um, definitely have had that experience. Um, <laughs> explaining it very vividly because these are things that I've experienced. To that, I will say, lyrically, Wusung does some really incredible things creating the setting um, along with the melodic nature of this song. So there is a psychedelic experience that I'm feeling, um, whether that's a projection or whether that's his intent, <laughs> but it, it's just so cool that he's able to kind of weave in and out for this song. I did want to touch on Sadika a little bit because she has the second verse. It's very short, but it almost feels like it's a tease, right? Where it's like, mm -hmm. This is what you want, but I'm only going to give you a little of it, a little of it. Um, how, how did you feel about Sadika's part in this song? I, I, I think it fit really well with the song. And, and then being that tease, like you said, I think also fits the theme of the song pretty well. Um, I don't always like in songs when there's like a really short, just like verse or whatever from somebody. And that's the only part of the song they're really in. So, cause it feels, it doesn't always flow well um uh there's a song recently i don't remember what it was that did that and i didn't like it but um i think it does it well in in this song um <laughs> so i think it, it it still flows well which is which is nice because it's sometimes that vocal change is just so abrupt and then it goes back and things are like oh that never happened <laughs> Have you thought about the experience that you'd like to share with us? Oh, I mean, <laughs> so awkward. Uh, I, I mean, I guess it's the story of like every teenage girl at that point where it's, you have the infatuation with a guy and then, you know, he gives you two minutes of attention and then you have to be best friends with him and then maybe date him. I don't know. Um, the pro honestly the problem is is when you do end up dating that person um because <laughs> it's, it's not healthy um, <laughs> it's also happened um well so you've experienced this during your teenage years did you have the same i guess like separation anxiety you had with that person that's kind of displayed here in this song or was there just an awkwardness of how do i do this um so in in high school i was kind of i ended up dating friends so we would always do the friends first and then start dating thing um 
so I was always around them anyway. So it was one of those, it was more of a, okay, I want to be friends. How do I make this more than friends? We've already established this much. And then, so it's that of constantly like balancing, not obsessively messaging them because you don't want to push them away. But then everything reminds you of that person, you know, makes it difficult to do anything other than constantly text them and be like, hey, I just saw this. You'll like it, you know? <laughs> there, your, def- your heart was definitely fluttering like a moth. Fluttering. Yes. Um, I'll say I don't think I've had that as much as since I've been older. So like in college, I dated the same guy the entire time. So that was boring. Um, <laughs> and then I've had crushes, but it's never been anything super dramatic. And there's never been anything around to influence that um (laughs) well i will say um you know being with someone for your entire college career there's definitely an attachment you have for that person but it sounds like it ended if i'm not mistaken um yes and that leads perfectly into track number three did you have a moment where you needed to phase that person out of your life to have that clean separation to essentially get over them I did the most dramatic thing. I broke up with them on Sunday and moved 10 hours away on Wednesday. That's a power play if I've ever heard of one. Um, That's both a hockey reference because you are a huge (laughs) hockey fan and um, an emotional, um, you know, standing your ground phrase. Um, So we're going into track number three. (laughs) <laughs> phase me um this is the title track this is the music video the lyrics are very much about trying to escape love to escape whatever situation that Sung was in to kind of say hey i'm good now but again i think this encapsulates the rebirth theme the strongest with the visual component of the music video First question, um, what did you think about the song and how, and the second question, how did the music video enhance that experience for you? So I first heard the song live at the concert um, where he opened for Epic High. Um, So I immediately loved it, uh, but also might have been concert high. So I was immediately biased anyway. Um, But then hearing it a couple days ago as just an audio and not a, a live performance, um i really enjoyed it it was definitely one of the songs of like i am going to put this on loop for a while um and i in a completely different way i am also going through a rebirth with moving and new job and all that so relatable in a very different way since i've been single for a very long time now um <laughs> so it's a it's, it's a good song it, it hit me pretty well uh the music video did change the vibe quite a bit for me um because I, I feel like the tone was a little more like forceful, I would say, after the um, after the music video. Because it was like the mu- the song by itself is is kind of still got like a chill vibe to it, right? Like it's still it's the same kind of tone as the other songs. Um, but I something about it with the music video where it's like more of a, a statement than just a passing thought. <laughs> That's a great way to put it, like a statement, right? Because it's this idea that, well, visually represented in the music video, that it, he's he's the moth, and there's literally a cocoon in the middle of the room that he has escaped from, that he has, um, you know, been birthed from. Um, I mentioned this on the How You've Been podcast, but there is a scene where the sprinklers co- um, come on, and he is drenched in water, but the cocoon is there. So in my mind, in my Freudian connectivity of what <laughs> psychology is supposed to represent back in the 60s and 70s, um, there is an amniotic nature to him being born um, and exploring his brand new world, his brand new space. Um, I apologize for hitting the microphone. I'm very excited. Um, and all of that, in addition to the women he's surrounded by, <laughs> the hands, the um, lack of shirt, um, a lot of visual stimulation, stimulus, stimuli. What is the word? One of those. Um, how, like you said, it's a little bit more forceful and it definitely changes the song for me. 
Um, what did you take away from a lot of the visual elements of this music video? I'm still stuck on the hands. I'm not going to lie. It's been the thing that I've taken away the most is there's just hands everywhere. And I, it, it makes me so uncomfortable, <laughs> but it's a personal issue. Like it's fine in the music video. Um, I just, I think like with having like all the, like he's like laying down in like a pile of women at one point, basically. Um, and it's like, it's, it's very clear of you don't phase me. I have moved on. I am doing great doing my own thing. <laughs> which is hopefully a, a I mean it type of thing and not I'm going to say this and hope you think I mean it and make you feel bad, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's an open to interpretation experience, right? Because on the one hand, mm -hmm. there's that side of it where you really are okay, where you're moving on and the world is ab is abundantly available to you, right? <laughs> And then there's the other side of it where you were hiding something deeper, where you were using distractions to um, to substitute for actually working through things. Um, you know, you we talked about this a little bit before, but can you tell can you go into Wu Sung's thought process of how he allows his art, his artistic ex expression to be open to interpretation? Um, so he, he mentioned it in passing in, in Twitch, really, of, like, he has meaning behind everything, but, um, and this is kind of, like, a, a commonly said thing, but he, hearing him straight up say it was cool, of, you know, artists of, whether it's actual, like, physical art or music or whatever, they obviously have, like, some meaning to, like, whatever they release, but once it's released, it's up for interpretation, and anyone can take whatever meaning they want from it. Um, looking at you, all the English teachers who have nitpicked <laughs> every book ever. Um, so it's, it's, he has his own meaning to it, but it's still, he's happy when anyone takes anything away from it, even if it isn't what he meant for it to be, because they're still gaining something out of it, which I, I respect. Yeah, I think that's what's really had me come around to Wu Sung um, as an artist, right? Because, I mean, the music is enjoyable, but really digging into the infinite possibilities of meanings and symbolism and hints as to what they could all mean um, is fun and fascinating to me. Um, for me, I'm clearly projecting from my past, <laughs> but I find it extremely fun. Um, I don't take it that seriously. I mean, I could take it seriously, but whatever. Um, but I, I think it's just, again, art is really just an expression of life experiences, right? And I think for Wusung, he experienced life in a very a very specific way um, in a number of, of you know different directional shifts. But I think there are a lot of fundamental experiences that are very similar to a lot of people. One being, you know, being in a relationship and then getting over that person. How do you express that dramatically? How do you express <laughs> that using, you know, the rebirth theme and then using the visual metaphor of a moth escaping a cocoon? And I think he plays into all of those things pretty fantastically. Um, one quick thing about the music video that I'd like to ask you. What are your favorite... Um, Outfit moments or lack of clothes moments? Uh, I think the, the shirtless with the jacket, I, I think, was my favorite. I mean, there are like four of them, so oh, understandable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I got distracted. Oops. <laughs> also understandable considering that the hands were probably in the way. Yeah, the hands were something. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did like the fact that the, the, the women, the dancers did have a purpose, right? I mean, they were moving mm -hmm. in a way that, um, you know, can emulate a moth kind of fluttering. Um, mm -hmm. but also with the color palette, um, you know, it's very orange. It's very street lamp orange. They could very easily just be the, the shimmering lights that are desirable, that are attractive to him. Right. And I think those are just really cool, open-ended things to interpret. Um, oh, one quick note. Uh, the blue jacket is fire. Absolutely fire. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to track number four, the last song on the album. Your favorite song. We've got yes. Modern Life. It's a modern pop punk 
maybe less pop but more punk um it's very introspective it's you know got a pretty deep meaning about kind of this this association that we have with technology and what it means to see someone representing themselves happy on social media on the internet and then what that really represents um how did this song hit you and what did the messages mean to you so for the first like days that the song was out i honestly didn't pay that much attention to the lyrics i just it was such a vibe and like the sound that i love from Sung and the rose and so i was just i was so in it just for the sound and and just to have a good time and then i read the lyrics and i went wait a second <laughs> like there's actually some deep meaning to this and um it's it's something that i i agree with i i used to be like super super obsessive with like social media i was like always on facebook and and MySpace to age myself and um, Twitter there for. <laughs> yep. I, I didn't I think have I had one of those, but I was around when it was either Friendster or Facebook, and it was like, what is happening? Yeah. And then I had like Live Journal and all, like I had all of it. Um, even when I wasn't supposed to. Sorry, mom. Um, <laughs> and uh, like I still, I still have all of it, but I don't use most of it because i just don't care um because <laughs> it's like Insta- instagram is the most frustrating because everybody's putting like these super edited photos of like how great their lives are and it's like you don't look like that like like be e- either be happy how you look or do something to make the changes for it like whether that's that's exercising more or i mean even plastic surgery whatever makes you happy as long as you're not hurting anybody like I just the the editing and the fakeness and because it's I I have one friend who edits so much takes like twenty years off of her life and it's like you 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 don't look like that like like you're not unattractive what are you doing <laughs> and I just that all frustrates me so I just kind of I took a step back from a lot of that a long time ago and I just use social media to keep up with like news and K-pop. <laughs> Yeah, and that's a really fascinating point you make about how we present ourselves on the internet, right? Um, there's definitely a contrivance, depending on the platform, um, specifically the larger ones that are related to K-pop. Uh, yes. Instagram, Twitter, <laughs> TikTok um, definitely have elements of editing and only showing people what you want them to see, right? There's also the other side of it where there is a feedback loop where there is a dopamine kick every time you open the app and you see a red heart or a like, or your view count goes up. And I feel like all of those elements are weaved into the lyrics of this song, where he definitely talks about the the way that we're inundated with technology. Um, in your experience, how do you feel like technology has shown the good and bad people? Whether that's... Um, a dependence on technology, whether that's a lack of media literacy, what are some of the things in technology that you feel like have been benefits, but then very clearly here, the way Wusong represents it, um, have been negatives? Uh, so I'd say the biggest benefit for me is just being able to contact other people. Um, my entire family is in Germany. <laughs> I am in the States. A little difficult to talk to each other. Um, my 86 year old grandfather has a smartphone and can FaceTime. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I love him to death. So being able to just video call him basically whenever I want to, just to say, Hey, um, is one of my favorite things that I can do. And I'm so glad that he is tech savvy enough to use a smartphone. Um, because at 86, that is not the standard I would say, um, <laughs> Um, and so that and like my cousins and, and, and just the rest of my family were there, like that connection. Honestly, that's the only reason I still have a Facebook is to keep up with friends in that way. Um, on the other side of it, it's it's so easy to get caught up in in the likes and all that. And it just takes such a toll. And I for the fact that I don't use social media, I am hooked to my phone. Um, <laughs> I am. They click to respond. I have a smartwatch specifically so I can get notifications faster. <laughs> I don't use it for anything other than text notifications and the time. <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea what the rest of it, it does. I know it does a lot, but I, I don't know. I'm not tech savvy anymore. I used to be super tech savvy and then I just stopped. 
<laughs> and I don't know what happened. <laughs> um, so I should probably take a social media and smartphone break at some point, but all of my friends are online. So, <laughs> and the few friends that I have in person are about to be long distance friends. So it's going to be even more difficult, but ideally I think everybody could use a good phone and media and content break because I think most people at this point are more hooked on media than they realize. I want to quote a lyric from the song. Yes. So it's <laughs> all on my little screen. I don't even know what I like. I just know it's got this many likes. I'm losing sight. I feel like that is so representative of the dependence that we have on all the different platforms. You know, they have a version of the like button. They have the version of the analytics to tell you how many people are engaging with your content. And like you said, sometimes we just need to take a break from social media, from the internet, from screens and separate. Um, I want to go back to what you said about the relationships you have with your family and say, I think it's incredibly important that we stay connected with, with people. I think it's incredibly important that we build connections and relationships with people with technology. But again, that's additive to how you interact with people, right? And I don't think, um, and I think with what Usung is trying to say is, don't let technology be it. Don't let that be the primary source of dictating how you feel about yourself and how you interact with the world. Um, and, you know, I said this at the very beginning of the album discussion, but there is a beautiful poetry with the fact that he ends the album with modern life with lyrics such as fake face, fake friends, fake fantasies. In concert with track number one, with fake friends want to break and steal your light. And I think it's just incredibly beautiful that he's just so intentional with how he put this album together. There are only four songs and yet it sings with such poetry. Um, and it's just really cool that you're able to kind of relate, um, you know, your personal life, understanding that there is there are benefits to connecting with people. But you also need to find ways to have it be supplemental, supplemental to your life, not be the primary focus of your life. Ooh, man, this... There's a lot of layers to this album. Well, I'll say that much. Um, we're well, you know, we're on modern life. This is your favorite song. Uh, why? G give me the final uh, end cap as to why this song resonates with you. I I still think it just comes down to just reminding me of the rose, and it's been over two years since we got an album. <laughs> um, coming soon, end of the year, full album. Um, super excited, but. In, in the meantime, any any little glimpses of the rose, even as solo Wusung, is nice. <laughs> Honestly, I you know I've had friends who are really into the rose. Uh, shout out to Wolf; he's a moderator at Soju Talk. He is an enormous rose fan, the rose fan. Um, his sister as well, Soapy, um, and they are also big Wusung fans. I'm guess I'm doing this backwards, where I've just found <laughs> Sammy first, and now I'm going back and going into all of the uh, emotional emo rock songs of the rose that i feel like the what when was the last release proper release like 2019 yeah yeah, yeah that was a they, lifetime ago the world was different yeah because the uh, everything with the lawsuit with their label happened like shortly after that so yeah no the the world was a different place, and yet I feel like I'm going back in the time machine to kind of experience everything leading up to what Wusong is present day. All right, uh, moving into some closing thoughts. So you have seen this man live in concert at Epic High. Tell us all about that experience. What was he like, and how did that experience go for you? He is fantastic. He is vocally live, sounds just like the album. Um was very much live though was not some sort of backtrack it was actually kind of funny because he so um he just had music playing off of like a mac <laughs> so somebody was I, I don't remember who it is but he has a friend who just goes in and like hits the space bar to play the music and then like walks off stage <laughs> uh, which was fun uh, and then it was just kind of him doing his thing he only played four songs which is 
fair is only opening for for epic high um so but uh it was it was great it was he played or he sang um phase me at the end but he also did i love you so bad which is a landy cover um and then he did lazy and i can't remember what the first song he did was <laughs> but it was it was a good time um did you do dimples i, I, I don't have, remember might have seen a video i might have also just imagining but um Maybe. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, did he do the song featuring Ashley from Ladies Code? He did not. <laughs> oh, well, I know that song. I know Ashley very well. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I know that song uh-huh. and her. She's she's a great human being. You guys should check out her um her work, whether that's with Ladies Code or on Get Real. Yep, <laughs> yep. Just going to leave that there. Um, no, I am excited. I'm going to see Wusong in June. Here in California, in San Francisco. I'm Oakland. So jealous. <laughs> Is it Oakland? I think it's Oakland. Crap. I'm getting my tours mixed up. So I have Wusong tickets and I have DPR tickets. Ooh, nice. D- DPR is in Oakland. Uh, no, DPR is in San Francisco because they moved because they had a lounge uh, venue and then they moved to the Warfield because they needed more space. So that I know for sure is in San Francisco. Um, so I think that leads me to the conclusion that Wusong is in Oakland. Either way, um, they're both very accessible by BART. Bay Area Rapid Transit is, is our train system. Um, and yeah, I will be going using that. And I will be consuming adult beverages, alcohol, <laughs> and enjoying my life. Um, I'm going with a mutual friend of ours. Um, her name's Tiffy. She is also in the Bay Area. Um, we met doing... An online project. I'll just put it that way. I have more information in the future, but let's just leave it at that. Um, Yeah, we are part of a larger online project. Funny enough, involving Wusong. So, yeah, it just it's cool how the internet kind of brings us all together. Um, You know, kind of tying in kind of some of the themes from the album. But I mean, it's just really cool that you know we met that you know. We're featuring on each other's podcasts and talking about a really incredible artist. So, yeah, all good things. Um, I imagine Wu Sung's set will be at least an hour, hopefully more. Hopefully, he plays a bunch of songs. Um, well, so you know Wu Sung and the Rose. What songs from the Rose is he likely to play on tour? So then I can also so, be on the lookout. Uh, I can't. God, I don't remember off the top of my head. So when he did his Twitch stream for the the album release, uh, he started it by playing the exact track list that he has for the tour. <laughs> yeah. Um minus the new songs, because I get I assume he's probably gonna play all four of the new ones, since there's only four of them. Um but he played the rest of them and it is a mix. It, it's mostly the solo album. Uh, the solo songs, but there were a couple of the Rose songs. Um, but I can't remember off the top of my head which ones they were. Okay, so you're so telling that- me I just need to listen to all of the Rose. Yes. In the next three <laughs> weeks? I think it's three weeks now. Four weeks. About you a can month. do that. It's it's only like three albums and some OSTs. All right, fair enough. I mean, yeah. I, it's spring going into summer, so I was in a upbeat mood, but apparently I'm just going to get in my feelings and listen to The Rose for the next three weeks, so here we are. Um, yeah. Some of their songs are more upbeat. Red is a fun song. And California, is that the name of it? I don't remember. He has a song about California, but I assume that's the title of it. I don't remember now. I'm so bad at song titles, I'm just like, I know this song. <laughs> it's okay, I'm just bad at everything my memory fades i'm 90 so <laughs> that's a thing um yeah no yeah, red but red and california were the only two songs off that album <laughs> it was just a single album <laughs> nailed it <laughs> all right well yeah just overall could not recommend this album enough um i have an affinity for male soloists that do a specific thing in music whether it's jackson's style of hip-hop and R&B, um, whether it's Wusung here, um, whether it's Kai with his very particular r and I think that is just my genre. <laughs> so it's um, regardless of if you're a man or a woman, I think there is just a sound that I connect with. And Wusung does a lot of really interesting things 
from his voice to the sound of his music to his production style that I think does a lot of emotional things that I connect with. And, you know, I I will say, like, the fact that it's in English really helps a lot because, you know, <laughs> his story being Korean-American um, and some of the things that he went through, you know, being from California, um, you know, it's not explicit in his music, but it is a piece of history that, because I know it, allows me to connect a little bit further with him as a musician and artist. And I think that is additive, definitely adds to my experience and no i could not recommend for recommend more um check out his mindset by the way um he's got a lot of really cool content and you get to know his history of how he grew up um, him him as an artist and his time with the rose so all good stuff alex where can people find you what show are you on plug away uh the show's how you been um it is on all podcast platforms i believe it's all of them that i've found um i've learned about podcast platforms by looking for mine um i'm also on instagram and twitter at how you been so come say hi (laughs) yeah alex is a great follow she posts about her uh albums she has an enormous collection of k-pop collectibles so if um if you're interested in a book with one home, <laughs> she can give you the details. That is all I'll say. Um, yeah, she's a really cool lady on the internet. So go follow her. Go check out her show. Um, the episode that I, I tuned into the entire way through that I learned so much was the <laughs> NCT episode. You go deep. I didn't know. 90% of the things you said on that show, on that episode. So thank you for uh, enlightening me <laughs> and, um, you know, increasing my knowledge of, of male artists. Um, Cause that was incredible. Um, yeah. Check her out. <laughs> All good stuff. The link um, to her show will be in the description below. So easy to find. All right. Thank you everyone for listening to the Soju sessions on the Soju talk nation podcast feed. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And continue the conversation on the Soju Talk K-Pop Podcast Discord. Follow Alex everywhere at How You Been. I'm Crispy, and this has been the Soju Sessions. Bye.